Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Fixer Med. Welcome back to my High Yield Anatomy Review Series for the USMLE Step 1 NBME CBSE and NBME CAS examinations. This will be part 13 of my multi-part video series giving a broad overview of the discipline of anatomy for these exams. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started on today's content. Today I'd like to build off the last video's content and start off by talking about injury to the tibial nerve uh, within the popliteal fossa results in the absence of plantar flexion of the foot, primarily affecting the gastrocnemius and soleus muscles, as well as weakened inversion, notably in the tibialis posterior muscle, leading to calcaneovalgus or calcaneovalgus. And then with injury to the tibial nerve, you also have difficulty standing on the tiptoes. Moving on, next I'd like to ta talk about the fracture of the fibular neck. Fracture of the fibular neck can lead to common peroneal nerve injury as this nerve courses around the lateral aspect of the fibular neck. Such injury results in paralysis of the muscles in the anterior and lateral compartments of the leg, including the dorsiflexors and everters of the foot. This paralysis manifests as foot drop. So. A good key word to recognize here is foot drop. Every time you see that, think about fracture of the fibular neck. You see that a lot on NBME style questions. Moving on. Next, we're going to be talking about breast carcinoma, also known as breast cancer. Breast ca carcinomas represent malignant tumors, typically adenocarcinomas, originating from epithelial cells within the lactiferous ducts of the mammary gland lobules. As the tumor progresses, it increases in size, adheres to the suspensory ligaments, also known as Cooper's ligaments, and leads to shortening of these ligaments. Consequently, this can result in indentation or dimpling of the skin covering the affected area. Moving on, let's go ahead and look at some questions now. We have a 34-year-old male who presents to the emergency department after sustaining a motorcycle accident. Physical examination reveals weakness in plantar flexion of the foot and difficulty standing on the tiptoes. Sensation in the affected area is intact. Which of the following nerve injuries is most likely responsible for these findings? Give you guys a few seconds to figure this out. All right, I think I gave you guys enough time here. Let's go ahead and move on and see what the correct answer choice is. If you need more time, please feel free to pause the video. Moving on now. The tibial nerve innervates the muscles of the posterior compartment of the leg, including the gastrocnemius, soleus, and tibialis posterior muscles, which are crucial for plantar flexion and toe standing. Injury to the tibial nerve can lead to weakness in these actions as described in the clinical scenario. Therefore, the correct answer is C, tibial nerve. Let's see why the other answer choices are incorrect. Sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve primarily supplies the muscles of the posterior thigh and leg, not specifically those involved in plantar flexion or toe standing. Femoral nerve. The femoral nerve innervates the anterior thigh muscles and does not contribute significantly to the muscles responsible for plantar flexion or toe standing. Common peroneal nerve. The common peroneal nerve supplies the muscles of the anterior and lateral compartments of the leg, not those primarily involved in plantar flexion or toe standing. The saphenous nerve. The saphenous nerve is a sensory nerve and does not contribute to motor function in the lower limb, therefore it would not cause weakness in plantar flexion or difficulty standing on tiptoes. Moving on to the next question. 
We have a 42-year-old male who presents to the emergency department after a skiing accident. Radiographic evaluation reveals a fracture of the fibular neck. Upon examination, the patient exhibits weakness in dorsiflexion and eversion of the foot. Sensation in the lower extremity is intact. Which of the following nerves is most likely affected by this injury? All right, I think I gave you guys enough time here. If you need more time, please feel free to pause the video. Otherwise, moving on now. The common peroneal nerve wraps around the fibular neck, making it susceptible to injury in cases of fibular neck fractures. Damage to this nerve results in weakness of dorsiflexion and eversion of the foot, clinically manifested as foot drop as described in the patient scenario. Therefore, the co correct answer is common peroneal nerve. Let's go ahead and see why the other answer choices are incorrect. Sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve primarily supplies the muscles of the posterior thigh and leg, and its injury typically presents with different clinical manifestations such as weakness in knee flexion and foot inversion. Femoral nerve. The femoral nerve innervates the anterior thigh muscles and does not contribute significantly to the muscles affected by a fracture of the fibular neck. Tibial nerve. The tibial nerve innervates the posterior compartment of the leg and is not directly affected by a fracture of the fibular neck. Saphenous nerve. The saphenous nerve is a sensory nerve and does not contribute to motor function in the lower limb. Therefore, it would not cause weakness in dorsiflexion or eversion of the foot. Let's go ahead and move on to the last question. We have a 54-year-old woman who presents to her physician with concerns about changes in her breast. Physical examination reveals a firm, irregular mass in the upper outer quadrant of her right breast. Mammography confirms the presence of a suspicious lesion. Biopsy results indicate infiltrating ductal carcinoma, which of the following best describes the characteristic features of this type of breast cancer. All right, I think I gave you guys enough time here. If you need more time, please feel free to pause the video. Otherwise, moving on now. Infiltrating ductal carcinoma originates from the glandular epithelial cells that line the lactiferous ducts of the breast. This type of carcinoma is the most common form of breast cancer, representing about 70 to 80 percent of all cases. Therefore, the correct answer is C, derives from glandular epithelial cells lining the lactiferous ducts. Let's go ahead and see why the wrong answers are wrong. Arises from myoepithelial cells in the lobules. Infiltrating ductal carcinoma of the breast arises from glandular epithelial cells within the lactiferous ducts. 
not myoepithelial cells in the lobules, originates from smooth muscle cells of the breast stroma. Breast cancer typically arises from epithelial cells, not from smooth muscle cells of the stroma. Develops from neuroendocrine cells within the breast tissue. Breast cancer, particularly infiltrating ductal carcinoma, does not typically develop from neuroendocrine cells within the breast tissue. Results from transformation of fibroblasts within the breast parenchyma. Breast cancer arises from epithelial cells rather than fibroblasts within the breast parenchyma. So that will do it all for today's video. As stated, broad overview of anatomy. We'll be going more in detail into all these concepts in the MSK unit. And don't worry if you don't have a firm understanding of nerves and arteries yet. It takes some time, so we'll be going over that in the MSK review unit for the most part. But that's all I have for today, guys. Um, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you like this type of content and want more content like this. Otherwise, that's all I have. As I said earlier, this is Fixer Med signing off. Goodbye and good luck studying, everyone.